Hello, YouTube world. Boy, I have missed you guys over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's been all kinds of crazy around here. Um, I'm so happy I was able to, to get on here and join you guys today for our regularly scheduled live session. Um, the last time that we met was on a Wednesday. I jumped on really quick um, because I knew that I was going to miss that Thursday because of some things that were going on. Um, and that's the last time I got to see you guys. So for those of you that are joining us on the for the first time, make sure that you like and subscribe, but most importantly, ring that little bell on YouTube. And that way YouTube uh, will let you know when I go live, it actually will pop right up and you can just click to join. Um, because sometimes I do go live outside of our regularly scheduled programming. Um, and if I'm not able to make it, sometimes I'll get on there and just kind of let you guys know. So if you're not subscribed, uh, make sure that you do that and ring the bell. That way, you know, every time I go live. Um, so today, while we're waiting for everybody to come in, let me tell you some of the things that have been happening. Because um, like I said, it's been super crazy. So we had, of course, Thanksgiving. And then the week after Thanksgiving, I hopped on a cruise ship for seven days. And it was so nice to be back cruising. I love to cruise. That's one of my favorite activities in the whole world to do. I love to cruise. And because we're here in Florida, we're able to get last minute specials and we don't have to pay for airfare and, and you know, all that other kind of stuff. So cruising for us is very, very affordable. And it's one of the things that keeps me in Florida, believe it or not, um, along with family too. But we were able to hop on a cruise ship and I really wanted to come to you live last week on our regularly scheduled time. But unfortunately, we were on an excursion and we did not have good Internet. Um, I actually went to see one of the um, Mayan ruins, which was amazing. And I, I had a whole lecture planned out to talk to you about culture. Um, and we'll probably get to that at some point later on. Um, and how uh, different countries handle healthcare a little bit differently, and how there's a cultural aspect of caring for people um, from different backgrounds. And we'll probably get to that lesson sometime in the future. But right now, I, the lesson I really want to talk to you about, what I really want to, to kind of um, have a conversation about, is the whole idea of cruise ship service. Right. And this is one of the reasons I love to cruise, because when you get on a cruise ship, everybody is smiling. Everybody. Right. The people that are there on vacation are smiling. The people that are there making up the rooms are smiling. The people that are serving you food and beverages are smiling. Everybody has a great um, attitude and their joy for life just shows. And of course, we're on vacation. Right. But do you really think that every single one of those workers on that cruise ship is having their best day? Probably not. Remember that, yeah, it's my vacation, but they're working. They're away from their families. They may be having personal difficulties with other people they work with. They may have had a um, customer last cruise that was just horrible to them because you know that happens. I actually see it sometimes and it's horrible. Um, so you know that they're not having their very best day. Not every single one of them, right? Let me pull this up so you guys can hear me a little bit better. There we go. So you know that they're not having their, not every single one of them is having their very best day. They probably honestly don't even want to be there. They'd rather be at home. Or even, you know, sitting around the pool drinking a, a, you know, adult beverage like we are, right? But yet, when you see them in the dining room, in the hallway, um, you know, cleaning up, they all have a smile on their face. They have a good attitude. They go out of their way to ask, do you need anything? Can I help you find something? And that's what I call cruise ship service. Now, of course, I'm paying for that, right? I paid money to get on board and I'm going to tip them and I'm paying for this service, but that's all part of their culture as well. You know, the, the cruise ship culture, right? If you can't at least pretend to be happy 
and give the customers an outstanding experience, then you don't get to stay. You don't get to work there very long. Does that make sense? Right. So their hiring and retention policies are going to be based in a very, very large part on how their their employees treat their customers. Now, a long, long, you know, if, if I had my way, honestly, I would live on a cruise ship, right? <laughs> Where I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. I don't have to make my own bed. I don't have to really do much of anything, but just live my best life. And that's ideal. That's awesome. But do you know who else isn't cooking and cleaning and, you know, picking up after themselves? Patients. They're not doing that either. Patients in a hospital or a nursing home or an assisted living facility, they are there because they can't physically care for themselves. And they have to be around people who can help them with cooking and cleaning and personal care and probably some medical things. Now, I saw something a long time ago, long time ago that said, it was on Facebook, of course, that said, when I get old and retire, I'm going to retire to a cruise ship because you have people there instead of a nursing home or an assisted living, you have people there that provide all these services for you, but they do it with a fantastic attitude. And overall, it's cheaper. Now, I kind of rolled my eyes at that because I thought, yeah, right, there's no way that a cruise ship is cheaper. But I actually did some research on it. And you know what? It is. If you're comparing assisted living facility to cruise ship living, it actually is cheaper to live on a cruise ship and have all your meals. There's onboard medical. There's, um, you know, staff there to take care of your room and do your laundry and all the stuff that an assisted living facility would do. You could have done on a cruise ship. The main difference, honestly, is the attitude of the staff that's providing that service. Because in an assisted living facility, you're probably not getting smiles and people asking, is there anything I can do for you? Or can I help you find something? Or making sure that you know what activities are available to you that day or how to get there. On a cruise ship, all of that is a given. That's all part of the cruise ship culture. But in an assisted living facility, when we have employees, they tend to treat this as a J-O-B. I'm here for a paycheck and that's it. I'm going to do the very bare minimum and I'm not going to be nice to my patients and I'm not going to um, go the extra mile because they're just not paying me to do that. And, you know, I can see why people would want to retire onto a cruise ship. I mean, that's kind of my plan, right? When I retire, I want to be on a cruise ship all the time. because. It's not the care that you're really concerned about. It's how you're being cared about while you're being cared for. And if we in healthcare could somehow adopt that cruise ship attitude, right? That cruise level service that our patients are paying us for. They're paying. They're paying more than you would pay the cruise ship. And we have to make sure that we're giving that same level of service. If we did that, can you imagine how much we would change healthcare? So that's that's my vision for the month is everything that I do, I want to do it with cruise level service um, and make other people smile. So what do you guys think? Have you ever been? on a cruise ship? Have you ever experienced that level of service? And do you think that it's possible to develop that level of service in healthcare? What do you guys think? So let's see who's here today. Sama, hello. Marley, hi. Ramses, hello. Paulette, hola. Paulette, I'm uh, learning uh, Spanish grudgingly. Very, very small amounts, but hola. <laughs> Uh, Paulette says, my exam's coming up next Wednesday. Wish me luck. Oh, we do. We absolutely do. You're going to do great, Paulette. We have complete faith in you. Rita says, I would like to know how the temporary CNA license I'm getting 
Uh, I'm getting my license next month, but I still need more practical. I'm trying to apply with a temporary CNA license. Rita, the temporary actually expires in December in most states. It was not renewed in most states. So you're going to have um, really quite an uphill battle getting hired with the temporary um, because it does expire in the next two to three weeks. Um, so go get your, your actual certification, your state test, and that will allow you to work. Sama says, good luck. LaMercy7 says, hi. Retha says, good afternoon. Queen Stella says, good evening. Oh, Queen Stella, I wonder where you're from. Uh, D says, is it hard to land a CNA job with little job experience? I've completed my prereqs and hopefully plan on attending nursing school in the fall. In the meantime, I would like to work as a CNA. D, it really depends on where you're located. So I, I'm going to kind of preface my, um, my answer with that. It depends on where you're located. If you're located in a high demand area like Florida, Florida has so many unfilled CNA positions and there's no way, even if every school operated at full capacity for the next 12 months, we would still not pump out enough CNAs to take care of all of the open positions in Florida. So in Florida, we don't expect you to have any experience whatsoever. Come in and apply. If you're a warm body and you are currently certified and you're not um, you don't have any strikes against you as far as um, reports of abuse and things like that. You will get hired. It's really that simple. Now, if you're in a low volume state, uh, places that like North Dakota, that they, you know, they just don't really have a whole lot of patients. So, you know, they don't need a lot of CNAs. Well, they may require a little more experience in a low demand state. So, it really depends, Rita, on where you're located at. Um, Sama, see here. Uh, it be your own people. Hi. <laughs> I want to know if we really have to take the Hep V vaccine. Is there a way to have a right to what goes in our body? All right. Well, I'm not going to get into the specifics of this, but I am going to tell you a little bit about my stance on this. Okay. And it's not a very popular stance, by the way. Um, so this is how I look at it. Now, I have always known forever and always that I was a caregiver. I was the six-year-old bandaging up my dog and putting them in splints, right? So I grew up knowing that I had some calling to be in healthcare somewhere. Now, I also know that because I have the heart for healthcare, that means that I have to be able to put others' needs above my own. That just kind of goes with the territory, right? So you wouldn't hire a math teacher that couldn't add. You, In order to be a math teacher, you have to have some math skills, right? So in order to be a caregiver, you have to have some caring skills, which means you're willing to put the health, well-being, and safety of other people ahead of your own. So I went into healthcare knowing that. Well, because the patients that I take care of, being a nurse, because the patients I take care of all have some sort of illness or injury or other deficiency that puts them at risk. Now, understand, if they were completely healthy, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't need my help, right? If they were healthy, they'd be home. So if they're here, they have some sort of deficiency, which makes them vulnerable. So if I bring something in that can be contagious to the patients, then that's putting, um, th th that's not taking good care of them. I hope you understand what I'm, uh, how I said that. So when you're talking about, opportunities to lessen the risk to our patients, those are all, those are all um, good things to consider. And one of those things would be the hepatitis B vaccine. We have a vaccine. It is widely available. It has been used for a long time. And if you're over the age of, 
well, let's just, if you're under the age of 30, you should already be vaccinated for hepatitis B because you had to have it to get into school. Okay. So, um, so you're probably already vaccinated for that, but they're going to look at several things when they hire you. Things like measles, mumps, uh, chicken pox, hepatitis, tuberculosis, things that if we have, we might be contributing to our patients who are the ones at risk. Now, if, if that's not an acceptable um action for you, then you may want to consider work in another industry. That's all. Um, so our job as a CNA or as a nurse or working in healthcare is to keep our patients as safe as possible while they're with us. And that includes being safe from us as well. So I hope you understand where I'm coming from with that. And let's see here. Uh, Cynthia says hello. And I unfortunately cannot pronounce, it looks like um, some sort of oriental character. So I don't know. Uh, my LPN graduation is today. Your videos were extremely helpful during school. Thank you. Well, congratulations. That is awesome. We are super excited for you. Freddie says hi. Hi, Freddie. Cynthia says, taking my test is 16th. Thanks for everything to help me study. Oh, Cynthia, we certainly wish you the best and hope you pass. Please let come back and let us know. Uh, Nicola Walters says, good afternoon. Blessings to you and thank you for all your videos. Oh, thank you, Nicola. I appreciate that. Rita says, thank you so much. Tiffany says, good afternoon. I never thought about the topic concerning a cruise ship. My aunts rave about the cruise ship experience. Absolutely. And can you imagine how we could change healthcare just by making that one small adjustment? Right. Um, so let's see here. Um, so uh, I bet your own pe people says in the flu shot. So same. I, I have the same stance about flu shots in healthcare. Um, I think that when you make that transition into putting yourself in service to others, you need to, to make that decision. That's a decision you make, right? Um, you decide to work in medicine somewhere. I think when you make that decision, you need to do it with a, a very, very um, good awareness of the fact that we are taking care of patients that are at risk. And that's going to require some sacrifice on our part to minimize the risk to them. So if that's not an acceptable risk, and that's okay, it's not acceptable to everyone. But you have choices. You can opt to go into other industries. Um, so that's something that you might want to think about if you're thinking about going into healthcare, because it really does... Um, when when you're you're evaluating the risk to the patient, it is a very valid consideration and it is a very valid conversation that we need to have as well. Uh, Queen Stella side attraction says, thanks for replying to my message. I'm from Nigeria, but I'm in Dubai studying CNA currently. Wow, that's amazing. Dubai is one place I'd love to go. I've, I've seen videos and I've heard it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's a very different type of place than what we're here, used to here in America. And I'd love to experience it one day. Maybe I will. Shirley says, Hello. Tiffany says, I wanted to thank you for your advice about requesting a Prometric supervisor and great skill videos. I got a test date and passed both the written and the skills yesterday. Thank you. Congratulations, Tiffany. That is awesome. I'm super excited. Um, it be your own people says then they shouldn't be vaxxed, I mean vaccinated. Um no, I'm telling you that your patients are at risk. So anything that we can do as healthcare providers to reduce the risk that we are bringing to the patients is something that should be considered by, um, you know, and it is being considered by the facilities that you're working with. And Freddie said, what happened last week? Oh, Freddie, I felt so bad. I was talking about that at the beginning of, of this uh, lesson today. So last week I was on a cruise ship. 
and I was supposed to come to you live on Thursday, um, but they did not have good Wi-Fi where we were at. Um, so I tried, but I, I wasn't able to connect. And I do apologize. I know it broke my heart that I wasn't able to come to you guys live. Um, we're here this week, though, and uh, I'm going to try to make a little bit better um, arrangements next time to make sure. All right. So uh, Dorcas says, hello, I hope you're doing well. I'm in college and it has been hard for me to choose a career. Oh, there's so many different careers out there. Man, it, it's overwhelming. It really is. And the, the nice thing is that you've got this long life ahead of you. You don't have to pick just one, right? <laughs> you don't. Um, you know, I'm a nurse and I started out in home care and I did office work and walk-in clinics. I've worked in um, an ICU and a hospital. I've worked for hospice. I worked for the school board. But I also am a teacher and I do a lot of training as well. I'm a speaker. I speak nationally uh, to other um, instructors so I have, even though I am a nurse by trade, I really didn't have to pick just one career path, right? It opened up all kinds of opportunities for me. So always look around. For instance, let me give you a great example of this, right? You don't have to pick just one thing to do for the rest of your life. So when we were getting off the cruise ship, and uh, the port that we went to, when you get off the cruise ship, you have to go down two sets of escalators to get to the bottom where your luggage is. Now, there are people that are standing at that escalator that work for the port. And their job when you're going up the escalator to go to your ship is to tell you to have a safe trip and hold on to the handrails. When you're getting off the ship and come down the escalators, they're there to tell you, welcome back and hold on to the handrails, right? That's a job. Somebody is getting paid to do, in fact, seven somebodies are getting paid to do that job just to be a greeter and to help make sure that people are safe. So when you're trying to figure out what you want to be when you grow up, keep your eyes open. There are so many jobs out there, so many opportunities out there. Are you a tinkerer? Do you like to take things apart and figure out how they work and put them back together? Well, then biomedical engineer might be right for you. Are you super excited about nutrition and herbs and how things uh, that you take in fuel your body? Well, a dietitian might be an awesome option for you. Or maybe you like to draw. Well, you can even draw and be in medicine by doing medical illustrations. So there's so many different opportunities out there that it can get completely overwhelming. And you're, you're, it's called analysis paralysis. That's the term for it. You're so busy trying to make a decision with all of this competing information that you're incapable of making any decision. Try not to get caught up in that. Try to figure out, okay, what are my strengths? What are some things that I like to do? What are some things that I can see myself doing? And then try to figure out what jobs exist in that category. And that will help you kind of narrow it down. But don't be surprised if throughout your lifespan, things do change a little bit. Because as we age and as we grow, a lot of times we develop new interests and new opportunities show up. So never be afraid to try something new. You might find out that you like it. So um, let's see here. But Bunny says, good afternoon. Thank you for your videos. You're very welcome. Miss D says, good afternoon. I challenged the CNA test and I passed by watching you. Thanks. Congratulations. That is awesome. And great job. Very great job. Paulette says, hi, Miss Patty. How long does it take? If, for example, you're transferring from Florida to New York as a CNA. Great question, Paulette. Now, understand that right now we're in the very middle of holiday season, which slows everything down. So keep that in mind, right? Holiday season slows everything down. 
You also have to think about COVID and how COVID is impacting different places. Okay, so bear in mind that that's going to impact this. But in general, as a general rule of thumb, anytime you're going to move from one state to another state and you're trying to transfer a CNA, and it's actually transfer is not really the right term. It's called reciprocity. You're getting a reciprocal license. So you're still keeping the one in the state that you started in. So let's say I'm in Florida. I have a CNA certification in Florida. I want to go to New York. So I call up New York. I um, find out, okay, I'm a, a Florida CNA. I want to be a New York CNA. They say, okay, go to this website, fill out this form, send us some money, do a background check, and we'll certify you. That's called reciprocity. I still keep my one in Florida. Now, I don't have to renew it, but I still have it. I don't have to give that up in order to get another one. So it's called reciprocity. Not all states participate in reciprocity. Keep that in mind. Not all states. Some states say, hey, not so fast. <laughs> Here, you have to take our test in order to be a CNA. And other states even go a step further. They don't uh, allow any other training or certification. You have to start from scratch. You need to know that before you move. So you really need to start this process at least four to six weeks before you plan on moving. That's the minimum, four to six weeks. Now, some states are on top of it. They'll get you, uh, you know, get you your certification really quick. But four to six weeks is the bare minimum that of time that you should allow for this process. Uh, two to three months for some places. Keep that in mind. Audrey says, hello, can I please get some help studying? I'm in the Colleen, Texas area. Okay, Audrey. So a couple of things. Okay, first, uh, Texas uses Prometric, which all of our resources will help you. So if you go onto my website, it's for the number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A.com. Let me type it in here for you. Okay, go to foryourcna.com. And then in the top menu, you'll see training. If you click on training, you'll see um, skills videos. You're going to want to watch those. And you'll see animated lessons. You're going to want to watch those too. Those two things will help you. Um, we also have a few other things on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, I have some other things on there as well that will help you study. But if you really, really, really want to study and do the very best you can, my online program is really what's going to, going to help you out tremendously. The online program is on courses.foryourcna.com. So I'll type that in here. Courses.foryourcna.com. If you go to courses.foryourcna.com and enroll in the online program, it has all of my classroom lectures. It has skills videos. It has animated lessons. There's a ton of activities in there. There's sequencing activities, supply gathering activities, flashcards, um, a million questions. <laughs> it is full featured. It's actually being used by a lot of hospital groups and nursing homes as their frontline training. It's also used by schools, training centers, and facilities all throughout the country. It is full featured and it will absolutely make sure that you're ready for that state exam. So those are the two things that I would suggest. The free option is to watch some videos on my website the not so free option is the course, which is 149 on courses.foryourcna.com, but it puts everything together for you. So Queen Stella says, wow, ma'am, I will like to welcome before the Expo 2020 finish at March. I will give you one month visa free. Please come <laughs> inbox me your direct details, ma'am. Um well, unfortunately, Queen, I really appreciate that. Um, I would love to go to Dubai, but right now there's no way. I, I'm so booked up. I've got speaking engagements coming up um, every month for the next couple of months. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take you up on it yet, but keep showing up here and I'll see what I can do. Uh, Trina, you bar, but thank you for the invitation. That's awesome. 
Trina Ubari says, hi, Miss Patty. I'm currently taking a CNA course in Connecticut and set to graduate on the 16th. Would you say, what would you say is the best to take the state exam as soon as possible after completing the course? Yes, yes, yes. A million times. Yes. Do not delay. I have seen this a million times. People, when they're in class, they're nervous, right? They're, oh my gosh, I don't know enough. I'm going to not register yet because I'm not comfortable. I'm not confident. You know, um, it's really easy to put it off. Well, then a week or two goes by, you're now no longer in class. You're not getting that constant feedback from the instructor. You're not getting to practice. And those skills are getting further and further and further in your rear view mirror. And you think, oh, my gosh, the holidays are coming up. I can't quite register yet. And before you know it, three months have gone by. And now you can't remember what you're supposed to be doing. And then six months go by. And now you can't register because the school is graded on your performance. So when you register for the test in Connecticut, your school is going to be graded on how many of their students pass the state exam. If you're waiting six months, 12 months, 18 months, chances are you're not going to pass and that's going to negatively impact their pass rate. So they're not going to let you test more than six months after your graduation date. So you really do need to get this done like as soon as possible. Binge watch my videos. Have you ever watched a movie so often that you know the lines? Like I've got a couple movies and I can recite them to you. As soon as they come on the screen, man, I, I'm, I'm reciting the words, right? If you've watched a movie that often that you know the words, that means that you really don't have to think about it, right? So if you watch my videos over and over and over and over and over, I will get into your head and then you're not really thinking about what you're supposed to say or how you're supposed to do it because I'm now kind of imprinted on you. And it does make it, you'll kind of flow into the skills a little bit easier. And um, the people that have on here that have challenged the state exam and pass, they'll tell you that that works, that method works. So try not to put it off, test as soon as possible, but don't, um, don't forget to practice in the meantime, okay? Because practicing is really going to be your key. Thelma says, hello, my name is Thelma. I took my first written test and didn't pass it. Do you have a website I can go to study? Yes, Thelma, go to foryourcna.com. That uh, link right under your comment, foryourcna.com. You're going to want to pay attention to the animated lessons. Go watch those. There's like 30 of them. You need to watch them. And then go watch them again. Now on that website, I also have a practice test. But there's five main things that you're going to get on the written test, five main things that they're going to be testing you on. The first is patient rights, right? Patients have the right to do whatever they want. They're adults. They can make bad decisions just like you can. So we can't ever treat adults like children. So if you answered any of those questions, which, you know, there's a lot of them on the state exam, where it shows that you're willing to treat an adult like a child, you probably didn't pass. Safety is going to be another big topic. So patient rights, safety is another big topic, both yours and the patient's. That's going to be a big deal on the state exam. You also need to know your role. If you don't understand the care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the care plan, that everything we do, we report to the nurse. Everything we see, hear, smell, or feel, we report to the nurse. CNAs do normal. Principles guide performance, and it's always about the patient. Those things are what the test is all about. That's our role. It's called the five key phrases. So patient rights, safety, know your role. But you also need to know normals. So what is normal for the skin as we age? What is normal for um, appetites as we age? What is normal for energy levels as we age? Those are, you need to know your normals. You also need to know your normal vital signs. And then you, let's see, I'm trying to remember what the fifth one is now. Um, uh 
patient rights, know your role, safety, infection control. That's the other one. Infection control. You need to know infection control. Um, so don't cross contaminate. What are the um, links in the chain of infection? Those types of things. You'll need to know standard precautions, all of that. So if you know those five things, patient rights, safety, know your role, infection control, and know your normals, then you should pass the written test. Okay. Audrey says, thank you. Emma says, hi, Miss Patty. Hi, Emma. Hi, Fatal. Queen Stella says, okay, Ma, I used to watch your videos and it's helping me a lot. Awesome. I'm so glad to see that. Paulette says, thank you for the info. And Trina says, you mentioned you had worked in hospice. Could you talk a little bit about that? It's where I'm thinking about going. Oh, Trina, this is awesome. Okay. So on my website, right, for your CNA.com, it's in, in the comments. I have a personality quiz. You've got to take this, right? If you're not at all sure where you really need to be, where, you know, what part of healthcare you belong in, take this quiz. But I also have in my blog, if you go to blog up at the top, I have all of the different um, types of healthcare environments and what to expect with each one. Uh, hospice is one of those. So when it, when it comes to working with hospice, I can do a whole half hour lesson on hospice alone. So I'm going to try to keep this really brief and maybe I'll talk about that next week, Trina. But with hospice, so with regular healthcare, what, um, what we call rehabilitative healthcare is we have somebody who's sick. We're doing our best to get them better, right? So our focus on making things better. But there are some conditions and there are some situations that we just can't make it better. It is what it is. We have no cure. We have no fix. We have no magic spell. We can't stop what's happening. And that is eventually going to lead to your death. So think about aging. We can't fix that. There is no magic wand no reset button. We can't stop aging from happening. And at some point, at the end of the road, you're going to die. I mean, that, that's just the life cycle. Nobody lives forever. So if we've got somebody who's 99 years old and everything's starting to fail, and we know that they're probably not going to be around too much longer, they're not eating, they're not drinking, they're not you know, they're just declining, a natural progression of the aging process. We can't fix it, right? So there's no sense in doing CPR and all of these other things and putting the patient through all of that trauma when even if we were able to bring them back temporarily, it didn't fix the problem that caused their death to begin with, right? It's not a ma CPR is not a magic reset button. So for some people, it doesn't make sense to try to prevent death because what's what's causing the death can't be fixed. And that's what hospice is all about, is recognizing that, hey, there's some things that we just can't fix. So we know that this is eventually going to end in the patient's death. We're not going to do anything to actively stop that from happening. But while the patient is alive, we want them to have the very best quality of care. We want their symptoms to be under control. We want them to live a happy life. And we want to be able to um, encourage those social relationships and um, allow the patient to do as much as they can. And we can do that a lot of times with medications and other interventions. So that's what hospice is all about, is recognizing there's some things we can't fix. So for those patients, we need to give them the best quality of life for whatever time they have left. And it takes a little bit different mindset, but oh, it is so worth it. It is so the hospice still, I am still a hospice nurse at heart. So I hope that helps you. Um, Thelma says, thanks so much. So Trina, make sure you go do that personality quiz. I'm sure it will open your eyes uh, quite a bit. Um, so, okay, let's get to 
I know I'm, I'm going over time, guys. Let's get to, um, oh, why do people want to get on here and just... Be mean. Everybody needs to be nice. All right. So let's see here. So who passed? Uh, Metro PCS came on here and told me today that they passed. So congratulations. That is awesome. Julia Mukubi passed on 12-3. Congratulations. Mar Maricela Martinez passed. Madison Jones passed. Congratulations, guys. Nicey Brown passed. Lakshmi Persaud sent me a very sweet message and let me know that she passed and uh, she wanted to send me a virtual hug because we helped her so much. So congratulations. J Jan LT and Purple World all dropped by our channel in the last couple of weeks to let us know that they passed the state exam along with the people that came in today and let us know. So we are super, super proud of every single one of you. It's a hard job. You guys did a fantastic job passing the state exam, and we could not be prouder. And thank you for letting us be part of your journey. Now, we have a couple of people that tested, came by to tell us that they tested, but didn't come by to tell us how they did. So Giovanni Reyes tested on 12-4. We're waiting to hear. How did you do? Shamika Jones, Lakeisha Buxton, M. Kahua. And Angel Cake. Guys, if you passed, if I called your name if and you let us know that you were testing, if you passed, come by and let us know how you did. If you didn't pass, let us know that too so we can help you um, pass the next time. And then we got four people that are testing coming up. Uh, Toya Leonard is testing on Sunday. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Latiera Johnson tests next month. Danielle Gaynor tests on Monday. Oh, how exciting. And Tamla Holloway has an upcoming test as well. So good luck to all of you. Study, study, study. But I'm sure you're going to do fantastic. We're rooting for you. You've got a big cheerleading squad out here that's chanting your name. You can do this. Um, and then we also had a comment from a and Learning Academy in Jamaica. So this is a school in Jamaica who's using our videos to help their students uh, prepare for their CNA exam. And they dropped by to let us know how helpful our videos were for their students. So we wanted to send a shout out to a and Learning Academy in Jamaica. Thank you guys for using our resources. We're super excited and we wish you guys all the best. So let's see here. Emma says, hi, Miss Patty. I'm now working at the University of Miami Hospital. Congratulations, Emma. Great job. That is awesome. Ramses says, congratulations to everyone who passed their exam. Absolutely. And Marley says, every state prometric test is different. Actually, Marley, that's not true. Prometric testing is uniform across every state that Prometric tests in. It's the exact same testing process. The same checklists, um, the same. So these are, can you see these? These are the 11 Prometric testing scenarios. These are the checklists, and they are uniform across all prometric testing states. So now other states are different, uh, states that test with HD Headmaster or Pearson or the Red Cross um, or even state-specific. Those will be different, but all 14 prometric testing states are exactly the same. And that's why our resources work well for those testing states. So I hope that helps you guys. Sometimes taking the mystery out of the test is like a big part of reducing your fear. Uh, so Emma says, congratulations. And I feel the same way, guys. Congratulations to all of you who are now joining the CNA industry. And good luck to all of you on your way. And for those of you who are just dropping by to see what this is all about, we encourage you to stick around and ask questions and find out whether healthcare is right for you. 
Until next time, guys, I will be back next Thursday. I'm super excited. Back on a regular schedule now. So until next time, happy caregiving, and I'll see you next week. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell. Talk to you guys later. Bye.